Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and welcome to the latest episode of Jim and Java. Hi everyone, I'm Jim Dempsey, 36 year veteran of fundraising and development, and I'm excited for this broadcast of Jim and Java where you submit your questions and I answer those questions. So let's dive right into our latest episode. Well, our first question today is from Carol in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Carol asks, is a text acceptable to thank a donor for a gift? Well, Carol, uh, the answer certainly is yes. A text is acceptable, but I guess the real question is why a text versus other things? In my mind, the answer should be yes and. So the answer should be for you is that a text but you should also add to that something else that can include a phone call that could include a visit to that person that could include a meeting with that person so there's a number of things that you could do we know that some of our donors are older and we have to be asking ourselves what are they going to think about getting a text from us for a thank you? I've actually had a few of my donors say after one or two back and forth with a text, can you just call me? I'd love to talk more. The one mistake that we make is that sometimes we forget that after a couple back and forth texts, the people may wonder why aren't we just calling why aren't we just trying to get together with them we don't want people to think that we are using the text as a replacement for our time with them so the answer to your question Carol is is a text acceptable the answer is yes but it should be a supplement to something else you're doing should definitely not be a replacement for something else, some other thank you. So I hope that helps and hope that uh, we're able to respond to your question. Okay, our next question comes from Maureen in Orlando, Florida. And Maureen asks, how do you cultivate and grow a relationship with monthly partners? Well, Maureen, we've talked so many times about cultivating relationships with all donors, but most of the time, people don't give at great regularity. Most of the time, when we're talking about responding back to people, it's after they immediately give a gift. So that could be three, four, five, six times a year. But when you're talking about regular, consistent people, especially those people who give on a regular monthly basis, you really need to be thinking about what do we do differently with those people? One of the things I know is that we don't need to be sending those people a thank you gift or a thank you note back from those people every time they give a gift because they're giving monthly. But we do want to look at a regular cycle of thanking and a regular cycle of remembering those people there should be i mentioned on a different one of our jim and java programs i mentioned a strategy that i refer to as the 333 strategy that's three letters or notes or emails three phone calls and three visits i would employ that strategy with our monthly partners that whether they are needing some added touch points or not I would put a cycle in where you're communicating with those people on a regular basis I would say that you should be at least quarterly sending a thank you note to those individuals just thanking them for being partners with you and I would also look at what are ways that you can appreciate them as partners 
One of the things that I have found over the years is too many organizations that take for granted the monthly partners. They especially appreciate those people who write the $1,000 checks, but then seem to take for granted the $100 a month person. Those individuals, especially if they're on a automatic deposit, a bank withdrawal, EFT, those individ those gifts are coming and those people aren't writing checks on a monthly basis. They're coming right out of their bank or right out of their credit card. And they can forget about us very easily because they're not writing those checks on a regular basis. And we can forget about them because they're so regular. And we think, well, they're going to be giving no matter what, so I don't need to cultivate that relationship. And realize those individuals could turn those those automatic options off at any time and stop giving on a regular basis and frankly we found over the years that those people who give on a regular basis are probably some of the best and most consistent partners that we have so I would really look at a regular cycle of communication with those people certainly include them on a quarterly basis with a newsletter if you do an organizational newsletter certainly do on on a separate month do a thank you I also look at what I refer to as an insider letter and a lot of organizations that I've worked with do what they refer to as insider letters that's sending a monarch sized sheet of paper starting out first paragraph with a thank you for your gift second paragraph is here's a life that's been changed as a result of your giving and third here's some things that we're hoping to do in the future and this is not an appeal you're not putting in there we want you to give but just let them know these are the things that we've got up ahead that we're trying to do within our organization. And I've found that to be extremely valuable and extremely helpful. Refer to that as an insider letter. And you can send the first one that says, we're going to enroll you and we're putting you on our regular insider mailing that's just sent to those people who are insiders that we trust and care about a lot. So Maureen, I hope that helped you and I appreciate you submitting the question. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the end of this broadcast. And as always, please continue to submit your questions. Remember on Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. And of course, you can always email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as always, I want to be there to help you increase your income and reach the goal of being fully funded. Thank you.